Okay, just finished the assembly of this Daimler pre-selected gearbox and I'm going to show you how it works internally and I'm also going to explain how it's different from other gearboxes. So basically this gearbox was um, an in-between stage between automatic and manual gearboxes. The idea was that they didn't want you to keep pressing the clutch which can get uh, pretty hard especially in city traffic and so it sort of eliminates the clutch. You, all you need to do is just bump the clutch once when you want to change gears instead of holding it down and releasing and holding it down and releasing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the plate over here. If you come in close, you'll see it says Daimler and Company Limited. So they made their own pre-selected gearboxes, right? And if I open this cover up, it's very similar to an automatic gearbox, but the difference is that it does not change gears automatically. You need to change the gears uh, just by bumping the, the clutch and shifting it into gear, but not pressing the clutch and holding it. Um, these are bands, they're called clutch bands, and these are the selector shafts, okay? So we've got reverse, we've got first, we've got second, we've got third, and we've got top gear. Now all these work on the principle of the clutch bands holding the gear, the planetary gears in place. It's very similar to an automatic gearbox, it's got a set of planetary gears per gear, and the different combinations and permutations allow you to get a, a different output. Okay, the only difference in this gearbox is that the top gear is completely clutch based. Okay, but it's an automatic clutch based system. You don't need to, you know, hold and press the clutch. This is the clutch lever here and this is a little gear lever. So you can select all the gears like this. And please note, if I select any gear, you cannot see any movement in the gearbox, which means the gears don't engage if I select the gear. All right. Let me give you an example. I'm putting it into reverse. This is reverse gear now. Until I bump the clutch, it, the car is not going to move. So let's say we're sitting at a signal and I want to reverse the car. All right, I shift it into reverse, but the car is not going to move. Until I bump the clutch. Now just watch this gear here. Okay, I'm going to bump the clutch. Which is basically just release it. And now it's in gear. And now I can just press the accelerator and I can move. You can see it. That's reverse gear. I'm gonna go into neutral. Now the way neutral works is it engages two gears and it does not allow the car to move forward and backward. If you notice here, you'll see both the gears moving. Can you see this one and this one? They both move together, that is neutral. You can see both the gears moving together. I'm gonna to shift it into first. And that's first. You can see it's come right up to the top and only this one is engaging, that's first. I'm gonna to go to second. Oh. Second. Can you see how the first release and the second went into the gauge? So let's say I'm driving along the road and I want to shift it into third, right? I'm driving and my RPM is going up. I shift it into third, which is what I'm doing right now on the lever. I'm shifting it to third. The car is still on second and what I'm doing right now on the lever. I'm shifting it to third. The car is still on second and is still driving in second and I'm going to put my leg on the clutch and just bump it. As soon as I bump it, it changes into third and then I can accelerate after. And now I'm going to go into top gear. Watch this here. This will shift as soon as I... That goes out. You can see the third gear is disengaged and the fourth gear is engaged. And that's a final drive output. As I'm turning this, you can see very clearly that it's moving at the same speed, which is basically top gear. And if you'd like to show, I can show you reverse as well. I'm going to shift it all the way back into reverse, but nothing has happened. It's still on the top gear and I'm still driving. If you can see the shaft, it's still moving the same speed as top gear. So I'm in reverse right now, but I'm also using the top gear. So now I'm coming to a dead stop. I put my leg on the brake and I stop the car. I'm holding it at dead and now I want to reverse. All I got to do, can you see this disengaged? And can you see this engaged? Look here. I'm going to show you right here. Can you see it engaged? and now it's in reverse. And if I turn this this way, this output shaft will turn the other way. Watch my rotation, watch the output shaft. Can you see it's turning in reverse? Now that's how it works. Pretty simple uh, mechanism. The only thing is setting it up, of course. Now, on this particular gearbox, we change the input shaft, which sits right here, and this is a clutch assembly right here. Um, all these plates and everything were changed, including the new rivets. Um, the reason we did that was because you can very clearly see that there's a torque bend on it. The, the whole shaft is torque twisted. Must have got jammed at some stage 